And we're back. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome back. We are indeed back after a week's hiatus. I was allowed a little bit of holiday for good behaviour. So we're back now, so let's see what we're going to do. I, like always, am presenter Stuart and this is edited by my mate Andy. Say hi Andy. On that note, I would actually like to do a quick shout out to Andy. Uh, because of the holiday, our timescale has gotten a little bit compressed. So to get this video out on time, Andy has had to massively work hard on this one, getting this one out uh, on time. So. Big props to Andy, really appreciate it mate. Keep up the good work, buddy. Uh, right, so today's video was actually a question from a viewer. Uh, Kieran asked me, a friend of, the, friend of the show, asked me how much should he be paying for HEMA? I thought that was a really good question and actually had some legs in it, so I kind of wanted to dive into it. Before I go any further though, uh, I would like to say that all of this is subjective. A lot of this is going to be hugely uh, variable from where we are in the country. So the primary thing to think about when it comes to HEMA costs is it's not really as clear cut as a question like that. It's how much should I pay for HEMA? Is 10 quid a night expensive? Is 20 quid a night expensive? It's not really as easy as that, unfortunately. For most providers, myself included, we are dictated to hugely by the cost of our venues. That's usually the biggest uh, outlay in terms of cost, or at least operational costs. I have additional costs. I have coaches to pay, kit to buy, kit to maintain, various other little bits and bobs like that, and a few things operating in the background. Uh, so costs do spiral, and it's not a cheap thing to do, running a HEMA club. So it's kind of an awkward question to answer, but it is a very good question and it's worth asking. So me personally, I'm always upfront about my costs. My HEMA club costs £35 a month. I don't accept cash anymore. Uh, COVID was kind of part of that, but equally as a provider, cash just has a habit of evaporating into the ether. Uh, either there or in a fuel tank. So it's very easy to lose track. So if you are starting up a HEMA club, Top tip would be never accept cash. Take monthly standing orders or monthly bank transfers, or however you do it, but do it monthly and don't deal with cash. It's just, you're on a quick route to nothing there. So usually, like I said, the biggest thing is venue costs. And that really explains a lot of the deviation in HEMA clubs throughout the country. If you are in the middle of London, hall hire and venue is going to be A, super rare but B, incredibly expensive, incredibly, incredibly expensive. And a huge percentage of the costs for you as a customer is going to come from that. So if you are looking at HEMA clubs in a very built up metropolitan area, generally, unfortunately, you are gonna be paying a little bit of a premium on top of it as well. So that's where a bit of the fluctuation comes from. It will be haul higher. However, there are things to consider do you have professional coaches? Professional coaches are worth their weight in gold. Now in the UK at the moment, we have a weird state of limbo as to coaches. Technically, anyone can just pick up a sword and call themselves a master or a coach or anything like that. There's no real checks and balances. And this is my main motivation for things like national governing bodies or some sort of professional oversight, just to stop anybody basically rocking up and saying, yeah, I'm X, Y, Z. Any kind of checks and balances will help kind of guarantee that quality. So you may find that some of the costs for your HEMA are because there is a good coach there. Not always, not, <laughs> certainly not always. Uh, I'm not in the business of disparaging other clubs, but I have seen some shockers in my time. Uh, everyone will remain nameless, but yeah, I've, I've seen some shockers. I've seen some great coaches. I've learned borrowed, borrowed lessons from other coaches they know um, in the past because what they've done has been great. It's been really fun to watch. It's been lovely to see a new spin on something. Generally, when I see new coaches, it's really, really interesting to see what they're doing. However, there are some absolute shockers out there. So uh, the fact that you have a coach isn't necessarily a guarantee of quality and therefore a guarantee of cost. You can't go to an expensive heme club, so this one's 25 quid a night. It must be great. They must be the best coach. It's unfortunately not as clear cut as that. 
so that's where looking at what you're trying to do is really important. So when it comes to cost, it's kind of a bad metric to judge your HEMA by. HEMA shouldn't be expensive. The kit is expensive enough. You know, the actual doing of the sport shouldn't be that expensive. And if it is starting to get a little bit expensive, maybe some alarm bells should be ringing. Maybe some red flags should be being waved there. Is it a case of you've got an international level coach teaching there? If so, then that kind of explains it. Are you in a grade one listed building with a bar attached to it? That might explain it. So you need to, if you start finding that your local HEMA or HEMA you're potentially looking at is quite expensive to do, maybe just a little cursory investigation beforehand. If there are none of these things, and if it doesn't seem to be in a particularly expensive area, and it is still really expensive, maybe you should ask yourself, why is it that expensive? Is the business side of it coming first? Is it money first, HEMA second? Uh, so that's always a question you should really be asking yourself when it gets that expensive. If in doubt, reach out to a coach or reach out to anyone or reach out even to the general Hemaverse, Facebook groups, anything like that. People will happily set you on the right course. Uh, some people slightly more fervently than others. Take everything online with a pinch of salt, as always. But that's the one thing I would say is when it gets to pricing, just start asking questions. If you look at a price and you think, hmm, that seems about right or that's very reasonable, then usually you're on for a winner. But when it's really expensive, and you can't really figure out why it's expensive, that's when you should be asking questions. Generally, it's dictated by venue cost, and kind of 20, 30% of the time, it's dictated by the person that's running it, i.e. the coach. Are they high-level coaches? That's where some of the money is going to. That being said, just because you pay a lot for a coach doesn't actually mean you'll get that much face time with them. I try and mix and mingle and give advice where possible with all of my students, all of my customers, wherever they are. Uh, but it's always not the easiest thing to do. I've got 60 plus paying members in my organization as a whole at the moment. And it's incredibly hard as I've got junior coaches under me that help run things. But as the main head coach, it's incredibly hard to make sure everyone gets FaceTime with me. So just because you may be paying a premium because there is a name attached to the club that you wish to go to, doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be getting that face time with them. So that's something else to consider. If there is a coach out there that you really want to study under, you're not guaranteed their attention. Uh, so that's something really worth considering. Doesn't mean that they're harsh or that they're ignoring you, but we're incredibly busy people. We have got huge amounts of numbers that we're dealing with half the time we get to a club night this is club owners half the time we get to a club night and there's a fire to put out somewhere not literally hopefully but there'll be you know there'll be a kit malfunction somewhere or there'll be a, a member that's forgotten to pay their memberships and you need to chase them up or you, a plethora of things can go wrong on any nightly basis or somebody has a complaint somebody's got a suggestion it's not just oh brilliant i love hema let's be a hema coach cool and then i coach 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 there's so much crap that goes around on the outside of it, on all the, uh, on all the periphery of running it. So actually coaching is, um, unfortunately, <laughs> probably only about half of what I do with the HEMA club. So that's something else to consider. You may not necessarily get what you're paying for. So primarily, what I would say, if you are looking at a HEMA club and the cost is a thing for you, now it may be... The, fact that you have minimal disposable income or it might be the fact that you're looking for an expensive one thinking you're getting a premium product it's not always that clear okay best thing to do to go along for a trial session any club worth their salt will give you a trial session if a club insists that you sign on the line for a trial session is available that's something to be wary of so honestly long story short what I would say it's kind of ignore the costs. If it's out of your price range, then fine, don't worry about it. It may be amazing, it may be rubbish, but if you can't afford it anyway, then that's kind of irrelevant to a certain degree. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. And that's fine, that's nothing to be ashamed of. But if something is expensive, just ask questions first. And basically, the best piece of advice I can give you is to go along, have a trial session. We offer a free trial session. 
I believe in the industry that should be standard. Your product as a coach and as a business owner should stand up on its own merit. And therefore, one free session for a prospective customer should be a given because your product should stand up and want them to come back. You shouldn't be needing to be grabbing money from people before they even start. So have a trial session and then you'll be able to get an understanding for the type of club that you're getting involved with. If they don't do trial sessions and they're seeming expensive, maybe something's rotten in Denmark. Anyway, I hope this helps out. So let's shoot over to Q&A. Okay, so today's question comes from somebody called Tom. And their question was, I'm thinking about buying my first deal. What sword should I buy? Now I did clarify because this kind of goes into one of the previous videos I did and the question he was wanting to ask was what type of sword? Long sword, side sword, rapier, arming sword, anything like that basically. To which my response is really the one you enjoy the most. Go for the rule of cool. Okay. When it comes to HEMA, never underestimate how much motivation can be gained from something you enjoy. If you go for something purely because you want to game it, because there's less entrance into, a, into that field in a competition, so you think you can pull more medals, or if it's something that's underrepresented, or something that you just like, oh, I should do this, but you know, I'm not really into it. Never doubt how much that will dent your enthusiasm. And if you're not enthusiastic, then you're probably not gonna do as well as you think you should do. And therefore, motivation drops, your results will drop, you won't get as much out of it. Whereas if you just do something you're passionate about, something you think is cool, something that motivates you, something that drives you, you will absolutely thrive at it. So when contemplating the weapon that you want to do, go for the rule of cool. Anyway, hope that helps. Catch you next time. Bye.